Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our salvation. Amen. Life happens in the interruptions. You're teaching a class online when your cat decides to cough up a hairball on the carpet beside you. You're leading a committee meeting when your spouse walks by in their bathrobe, not knowing that you're on a Zoom call. Your child asks about where babies come from in the checkout line at the grocery store. Life happens in the interruptions. Or the accident on the side of the road that makes you late for your meeting. The emergency call that comes in the middle of the night. The safe word that your teen texts you because she feels unsafe at a party. The routine appointment that leads to the three words you don't want to hear. You have cancer. Life happens in the interruptions. When we encounter Jesus in our text this morning, he is still on the move. You could say Jesus has his share of interruptions. Even the disciples interrupt him when the waves get too much on the sea. For the past few Sundays, the gospel writer of Mark shares stories of Jesus' ministry, important stories about who Jesus is, who is a part of Jesus' family, and who comes to Jesus for healing. Well, Jesus and the disciples have returned from their journey across the Sea of Galilee in a foreign land, and now they're back into Jewish territory. Jesus is met with the crowds rushing in to see him again. Immediately, he's encountered by one of the synagogue leaders, Jairus, whom everyone knows. Jairus is out of time. His daughter is deathly ill and needs Jesus. Jairus is desperate. He comes to Jesus for help. He's a leader. He's been trained to be competent and to get things done and to keep it all together. But his little daughter is sick, really sick, deathly sick. He's a leader of all those who might be skeptical of Jesus and Jesus' teachings. But when his back is against the wall, when he is anxious about his own daughter's well-being, he needs Jesus, despite what the others think or believe. Jairus runs to Jesus. Jairus finds Jesus and throws himself at his feet, begs Jesus to come and heal his daughter. Parental love leaves him utterly vulnerable. Jesus, come now. I'll escort you personally. Let's get ahead of this crowd. And they set out together for the house. Every step takes them closer to his little girl. Jairus' mind races. I found him just in time. My daughter still has a chance. He's so close. Jairus and Jesus stride with purpose side by side. The disciples scramble to catch up. Jesus suddenly stops. A woman comes up behind Jesus in the crowd and touches his cloak. He turns around. There are so many people pressing in on him. It is hard to see what happened. He asks, who touched my clothes? Life happens in the interruptions. This woman has been suffering for a long time. She has been hemorrhaging for 12 years. She's been to every medical facility, every physician, She's waited days in the lines at the clinics, probably turned away more than once. She has endured so much. She has spent all she had paying the bills that unsuccessful treatment left her. She was no better. Rather, she was worse. But she had heard about Jesus. She is desperate, too. She interrupts Jesus catching him by surprise. Pay attention to her illness and her struggles and also her courage. 
If she can just get close enough, maybe on the ground, pressed in from the crowd to get close enough to Jesus, if she can reach far enough in, she might be able to reach Jesus. It feels like one last chance. In an act of utter desperation, she thinks, if I just touch his cloak, I could be made well. In this story, an utter act of desperation is an act of faith. This time, finally, it results in her healing. Life happens in the interruptions. Interruptions are the very nature of ministry. Jesus stops, life interrupted, not because he felt the tug on his cloak, but rather he felt the power go out of him. She comes forward to Jesus, trembling, sharing her whole truth about her life and her condition and her desire to be made whole. And Jesus brings her in close. She, he brings this unnamed woman into his family, calling her daughter, proclaiming that her faith has made her well, that she is healed. Meanwhile, Jairus, anxiously waiting beside him, wondering what has stopped Jesus in his tracks. What is delaying the journey to heal his daughter? Jairus, again, is desperate, impatient that this great healer is distracted by someone who has no recognition and no standing in the community. Jairus' daughter, still critical, on the verge of death, awaits Jesus' arrival. Well, Jesus goes on to Jairus' house, only taking a few people with him, and the people there are grieving. And Jesus says, your daughter is sleeping. But those around him laugh. So Jesus decides to put everyone outside, except the child's family and those he brought with him, and he gathers them in close. And he goes to the 12-year-old girl and takes her by the hand and says, little girl, get up. She's healed. She gets up. She begins to walk around. These two stories intertwine. These two stories are about life, all parts of it. They are stories about being utterly transformed. It speaks to the power within Jesus. And here, desperation is named faith. Jesus extends life into places where it looks like life has gone out. Where in your life have you felt like you had one last chance? One last chance to pull it together for redemption, for your own healing, for your own wholeness. When have you felt that one last chance is all you had to find life again? And you were courageous enough to reach for it. Jesus' ministry is marked by connections created as he encounters and accepts the people whose lives are hemorrhaging, right? Hemorrhaging blood or guilt, hemorrhaging self-righteousness or blindness, hemorrhaging paralysis or greed. Sometimes Jesus touches them, and sometimes they touch him first. Sometimes the touch is with a hand, and other times it is only through words. However that happens, a connection is made. And here in the Gospel of Mark, the connection doesn't require words of faith to be spoken or acts of repentance to occur. For it's about courage. Courage as a sign of faith. Well, in this case, courage with a side of desperation, but courage nonetheless. 
When we have courage to face the realities in our own life, when we have courage to speak, to seek out not only our own medical healing when necessary, but also our own spiritual healing, often the result is going to be a closer connection to Jesus Christ and to God. And well, the church. The church, the body of Christ, comes into being through connections that we make, through the relationships we nurture, by receiving the grace that once was denied. The church, at its best, is a place where we can welcome those who are marginalized and unnamed and broken and dingy and frustrated and desperate. It is a place where we can take a stand and support those who are courageous. The church can be a place to grow and be nurtured, to be received for the hurt that we carry and the healing we are so desperate for. A community like this can be a place that offers life in a new way, where acceptance is received and in this story today, where hemorrhaging is healed. Jesus extends life into places where it looks like life has gone out. And Jesus has the capacity to receive both of these stories. Jairus' fear and the woman's yearning. God holds our stories and gives them time. There's no impressing God or being first in the line for God's favor. Jesus has enough grace and power, enough attention and love for all. God loves each of us as if we were the only one. Consider whose stories are already bound up with yours. Consider how they join in to create a tale more complete than the one you could tell alone. Maybe there is a story that you need to receive or a story that you need to tell on your own road to wholeness. May this be a place. And in the coming weeks, as we regather for in-person worship, maybe this is the time. Because Jesus invites us to live. Jesus, the giver of life, the one raised from death to life, invites all of us to live. Thanks be to God for one last chance and the sacred power at work when our own stories intertwine with one another. Amen.